Hey everybody, welcome to the Math Jedi. And today we're looking at solving word problems in one variable. I'm going to show you some things about mixtures, work problems, and consecutive numbers. Are you ready? Here we go. Today we are looking at word problems. And for solving word problems, this is one of those lessons where there's no one way I can tell you to do this because it requires some thinking. And what I'm going to do is give you some tips and some guidelines. So tips and guidelines. And realize that you can use these as you see fit. Now every single math teacher is going to be having some different kind of guidelines probably when solving for problems, so do realize that. But the, the basic things is the very first thing, and this is actually, I, I kind of flip it around a bit, is when you first get a word problem, you want to actually write your answer. What? How do you write the answer if you don't know what it is? Well, you're going to write your answer with a blank. Because you always need to have a sentence answer for a word problem. And what you're going to do is just leave a blank space, like a little, like a little line, like beep and you're going to put the answer there at the end. So this way, so why do that? So that focuses you. So we do this because it's going to focus you on what you need to go and solve. Oftentimes, students don't know where to go and solve. Number two is you always need to define a variable. So you are going to go and tell me, what does x mean? So x is, what is it? So x is, I don't know. It's the number of smiley faces, of smileys. Um, I don't know what it is, but you are going to tell me what it is. Okay, so make sure you're going and doing that. So you're going to define a variable. Um, the third thing, of course, is you have to write an equation. Now, I am going to write um, a little note on this one. <clears throat> Oftentimes, I see young, young math students love to have an equation that equals x. So I'm going to write down here, can not equal x. So x can never be the answer to an equation. Okay, you just can't. You have to have x somewhere else. All right, so it cannot equal x. And um, lastly, you always want to check. Does it make sense? Hmm, well, go and ask yourself, does their answer actually make sense? So you follow these sorts of things, and you should be good to go. Now, saying that, what kind of things do you need to be thinking about? Or what kind of problems do we need to look at when you are going to be solving things? So I'm going to give you some examples now. And the examples, again, are hopefully just general enough where you can be saying that, oh, okay, I know now what you're talking about a little bit. I'm going to apply that to the situations that we're in. So here are some examples. Let's go over here. <clears throat> the first one is going to be kind of like the topic is kind of numbers. So I want to remind you something. that x can represent anything. But it basically, x represents what you don't know. And you can build off that. So what do I mean? Well, here we go. Let's say you had the sum. of three consecutive. The sum of three consecutive integers. Oops, <laughs> there you go. The sum of three consecutive integers is 138. What's the middle one? So what's the middle number? 
All right. This is a classic question. You're, at some point in your math career, you're going to get this question. Absolutely you are. So a couple of things. Uh, remember step one was write a sentence answer. So this is what your sentence answer would be. The middle number is blank. There. So now I know, oh, I'm trying to find out what, what the middle number is. Perfect. Second thing is, we need to let x be something. So a couple things. Consecutive integers. Whoa, that seems fancy. Um, what does that really mean? This is what it means. Consecutive means in a row. So imagine you had row numbers like, I don't know, 7, 8, and 9. Are those consecutive? Yes. They're integers? Yes. So there you go. Well, I need to find three consecutive numbers that equal 138. Great. Well, where do you start with this? Well, first is you have to tell me what x is going to represent. For these ones, let x equal the first number. Notice I kind of said what I'm letting. Uh, I like that phrase, let x equal the first number. I'm going to give you that example on the left on the right hand side that you're looking at right now. And um, these are this isn't the answer obviously, but I did want to show you. So imagine, just imagine that the first number is x. So imagine it was 7. We just happen to know that. Algebraically, what would 8 then be? You have to use it x. So what would 8 be? If x was 7, what would 8 look like algebraically? What well, would be x plus 1? What would 9 be? It would be, you're right, x plus 2. So for consecutive number problems, you always get the same sort of equations. So if x is the first number, then basically what we have here is that first number plus, I'm going to use brackets just to make it very clear, the second number plus the third number. And that will equal is, remember the word is, it means equal, is 138. Okay. Now we have a regular sort of equation to go and solve. So let's just go and do that. Let's combine our like terms here. I see three x's on this side, and I also have uh, three constants, and that's going to be 138. This is looking pretty good. So I'm going to subtract three from both sides. So again, if you know some of the the algebra stuff you're kind of still working on, you can go back and watch older videos, get some more practice in. Practice makes permanent. And 3x equals uh, 135. And then I'm going to go and divide both sides by that 3. I'm going to get a nice little purple color. Now, can I squeeze it in? Ah, can you see that? It's dividing by 3. Trust me in this. It's dividing by 3. And x would then equal 45. Boom. That's your answer, right? Right? No. I asked you what the middle number is. So I need to go and add 1 to that. So my actual answer is 46. That's the middle number, and that's what the answer is. Um, remember I said I should always go and check? Well, I'm going to go and check right now. So if I said the three numbers, the three consecutive numbers are 45, 46, and 47 then, does that equal, use my calculator, dun, 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 dun. oh my gosh, it does equal 138. Yay! So those are consecutive integer problems. Um, I want to tell you one little hint, though, and where teachers get you this. So you just saw that um, consecutive problems are always going to be x, x plus 1, and x plus 2. Always. They're always that way. But you're going to see something eventually called consecutive um, even or odd. So this is where you're saying like consecutive even numbers would be like 2, 4, and 6. Consecutive odd numbers, so odd ones, would be things like, I don't know, 3, 5, and 7. See how that kind of works? Either way, you get the same algebra, though. And this always confuses kids. You get the same algebra, even though they're evens and odds. If the first number is x, what's this, what's this 4 going to be? It's going to be x plus and this is going to be x plus 4. Good. And look over here. If they're odd, consecutive odd, the first number is still x. And you still have the next number being x plus 2 and x plus 
4. Do you know what the KKM is, the common kid mistake? I'll hint, hint, hint. It comes over here. Oops, let me get a different color. So what's the KKM? Hmm? Consecutive odd. And guess what kids want to do for consecutive odd? They want to write this. X, X plus 1, and X plus 3. They want to make it odd numbers because it's consecutive odd. Does that make sense? Oh, I can see how that happens. But no. No. <laughs> okay, don't do that. Consecutive even, consecutive odds have the exact same algebra. And it looks like that purple stuff there. Just wanted to make a little announcement for that. Um, let's take a look at some other word problems that are always good. Boom. What? What was this? Did that just pop up? This is technology, I tell you. Um, so here we go. So we got some... Uh, some pretty cool word problems going on right now. These we consider probably really challenging sort of things. Um, this one is going to be, let's take a look at this. It's about painting, right? So we would say this is a work problem. So we're going to go here. Can I type now? Yeah. So the topic of these are work problems. And I want to show you how the formula always works pretty much for work problems. It's always going to be one over kind of the first person. So work is always like people working on things together. And then it's going to be plus one over the second. And then it's going to equal one over together. So notice it's, and it's always about kind of time when you're working, usually working on a project of something. So we're basically saying that when you work together, you're never like overlapping things. You're actually working on things independently to make something happen. So imagine you had to go and cut the lawn. You know, when I was a kid, I had to cut the lawn. So you have to go and cut the lawn and um, you start at one end, your friend starts at the other end and you meet in the middle and the lawn is magically done. It's not that you're both pushing the lawnmower. Okay, so um, do you realize that's kind of what we're talking about there? So that's why we use the ones. Now, if you kind of remember that situation and that formula, then you can go and attack the problems. So these are for word, uh, work word problems. I'm just kind of arranging things right now. I'm having issues with my colors right now. I'm trying to find, there we go. Okay. So let's go ahead and read this. It says, suppose one painter, so you got one painter. That's a horrible color to use. <laughs> let's try and use this one. Um, one painter can paint the entire house, great, in 12 hours, pretty fast, um, in 12 hours. But the other second painter, he takes eight hours. Oh, he's much, much more efficient. And if they work together, if they work together, basically, and they painted um, a house, how long would it take? So, so that's what we, we don't know, do we? So one of these things, one of these things is typically going to be your X. So remember, um, I'm going to start off with a sentence. It would take blank hours together. So that's what I want to know. Okie dokies. So here we go. <clears throat> and that kind of tells you what the X is going to be, isn't it? Um, together. So. We're going to put the X, um, so this one, we actually, we don't know how long it takes them to do it together, but we do know that the first person, it will take. And because I'm writing a one here, people think it's just because it's, it's the one painter. No, you always do this for work problems. It's always one over something. So this is one over 12. That's the first person. And the second person is one over eight. And that is going to be one over X. Now, this is a pretty easy... Um, question to do, but I want to just kind of set it up this way. Because in, in reality, all you're doing is 1 12th, and you're going to be adding 1 8th to that. And you end up getting 5 over 24 is equal to 1 over x. Okay, so now we have a nice little simple algebra uh, question. And uh, for these kinds of questions, I always like to have cross multiplying. And if you did that, you would get 5x is equal to 24. 
So x is equal to 24 over 5 hours. Now, I'm a huge fan of improper fractions. But because it's a word problem, I would go and convert that. So if that is 24 over 5, that gives me 4.8. So it's 4.8 hours. Now, some teachers might accept that. Other teachers would say 4.8 hours. I want the minutes as well. So this is tricky. So this is 4 hours and 0.8 of an hour. Of an hour. So let's take a look at this mathematically. So it's 0.8 of an hour. Of means to multiply. And an hour has 60 minutes. So now you're going 0.8 times 60 and that gives you 48 minutes. So a lot of teachers would want you to go and write that it would take four hours and so four hours, I'm gonna try and squeeze this in here, and 48 minutes. That's what a lot of teachers would want. So that's for work problems. Work problems are classic problems that you need to know. So let's go and take a look at some other questions. Oh, there's one. Oh, scientist. We like scientists. Um, the scientist needs a 10% saline solution. So this topic, we're going to go and call these ones mixture problems. Now, mixture problems are always <clears throat> looking at usually uh, mixing chemicals together. and you can use things like money as well, like maybe amount of coins or amount of dollar bills. Coffee beans are always often um, interesting. And the way that I like to always think about mixture problems is you ought to think about it's always the amount of something times the value. I'll give you an example. So my example is, let's say you had six seven dollar bills. There's no such thing as a seven dollar bill. But just imagine you had six seven dollar bills. What's the value of that? Or what's the total of that, I should say? Well, the total of that would be six times the seven, so that's forty-two dollars. And you want to be thinking of, of that little kind of mini equation sort of thing. Now, the other thing I like to add is think of beakers when it comes to science. So I always find it, because usually these are like science-y kind of mixture, chemical kind of equations. And usually what ends up happening is you're given some amounts and types of chemicals, and you're asked to go and make basically uh, a different kind of mixture. That's why they're called mixture problems. So let's take a look at this one right here. A scientist needs a 10% saline solution for an experiment. So the 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 type that it needs is a 10% one so it needs a 10% solution uh, and you're going to see there's going to be two different versions of, of what things you get here in the in the closet he finds a 20 ounce bottle of a 25% so there's a 25% one here uh, and how many ounces of pure water should he add to the mixture to produce the correct saline solution. So a couple of things is, what, how much was that 25% did he have? Um, he had 20 ounces. He had 20 ounces there. And then he also had pure water. Now, pure water, um, that's interesting. So pure water. Now, the idea of pure means 100%, basically. So for this one, uh, you have to be thinking of what water does. So water is not any kind of a saline solution. So it's actually a 0%. So for this one, it's actually going to be a 0% because it's water. And it's pure. Now, how much of it was there? Well, we don't know. Did it say how much there was? It just said it added a bunch of water. So we don't know. We're going to call it x. So what is the total of this one right here? This one would be 20 plus x. Make sense? There we go. Okay. So let's just go to the math now. So this just says 20 times 
0.25 plus, now this is always the interesting one, this is x times basically 0. So I'll, I'll write it down, plus x times 0, which is just going to be 0. And now this one is always interesting. So this is going to be 0.1, or actually let's make it the other way around. Oops, All right, there we go. Um, this is going to be 20 plus x times 0.1. There we go. Let's keep it consistent. I like that, and then go and solve for our x is basically all we are going to be doing. Um, just like that. And oops, sorry, I should make it. I should make my brackets like this. Oh gosh, I'm not making this look very nice. There we go. Sorry, you're probably cursing me at home, like, oh my gosh, I'd make my... There we go. Okay, so let's go and figure this one out. So you have to go 20 times 0.25. And we get 5. And of course, this becomes 0. And over here, you got 20 times 0.1, which is 2 plus... 0.1x. Let's go and subtract 2 from both sides. Let's go and subtract 2 from both sides. And you end up getting 3 is equal to 0.1x. I'm going to divide both sides by 0.1 and I'm going to get 30. So x becomes 30. <clears throat> So, when we're talking about how many ounces of water, you needed 30 ounces of water to produce that solution. And does that make sense? Remember, we always want to be making sense. Does that make sense? So imagine you had 20 ounces of this 25%, and you add water. What is water really doing? Water is diluting something. So you're taking a bunch, and you're diluting it, and you're diluting it to a 10% solution. So does that make sense? Absolutely it does. Okay, so I'm hoping it does for you. So those are mixture problems, so think about that a little bit. And I think we have one more type of problem to go and look at. Oh, we have another um, solution one. Do we want to see another, another mixture one? Shall we see one more mixture one? Is that a yes? Okay, so here we go. Uh, it says, how many liters of a 70% alcohol solution must be added? So. Let's write down our sentence. I forgot to do that last time. There must be blank liters added. Oops. Added of a 70% solution. So that's what we're trying to find. Let's go and draw our beakers. And you can use beakers for, for any kind of question, um, any kind of mixture of question. It doesn't really matter. So it's always amount times a value. And let's get some more colors here to make it look cool. So how many liters of a 70% alcohol solution must be added? So it's a 70%. So how many? We don't know how many. X, as we're trying to find out. Must be added to 50 liters. 50 liters of a 40%, so 0.4 to produce a 50% alcohol solution. So how many? Um, the total of here would be, how much would we be mixing together? We'd be mixing x plus 50. So let's go and do all of our math. So we're going to multiply these things together. So 0.7x plus 50 times 0.4, which is going to be 20, is equal to, remember this is 0.5, times x plus 50. And we want to go start doing those. So we're going to go and expand our brackets. Expand and expand. So we get 0.5x plus 25. Uh, we had all of our stuff over here. So now we have our, our, our really good algebra equation. We need to get our x's on one side and our plain numbers on the other. So I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. 0.5x, I should say. 
I'm going to subtract 20 from this side and subtract 20 from this side. And I'm going to get 0.2x is equal to 5. Divide both sides by 0.2. And I end up getting, oh wow, 25. And there we go. So what do I need? I need 25 liters of that 70% solution. To mix with that 40% solution, I'm going to get a 50% solution, just like that. So mixtures, work problems, consecutive numbers, all sorts of word problems. And hopefully you took some things away from that. Thanks all you math Padawans for tuning in. Hopefully you took a little bit away about how to solve word problems. There's lots of different ways. Go and check out some other math videos and have a fantastic day. Be awesome. Do good things.